All right, so I had a lot of fun doing the Too Hot to Handle review, so I decided it's time for me to move on to the big screen and review a nice piece of cinema. And so I tweeted, what's the best worst movie on Amazon Prime right now? And immediately, I had a bunch of people tweet me a movie called Velocipaster. And I read that title, Velocipaster, and I knew right away that I would be reviewing the shit out of this movie. Velocipaster, what do you think that's about? Take a, take a stab, what do you think? A pastor that's also a velociraptor, you you might you might be thinking? Yup, that's exactly what it's about. I mean, look at the fucking poster for this shit. How could I not review this movie? I read an article where the creator said that he tried to type velociraptor into his phone one time, and it autocorrected to velocipaster. And he looked at that, and he said, that's a movie right there. Which, honestly, I commend because finding inspiration in stupid shit is how I come up with, like, all of my ideas. I mean, I did a song about... Harry Styles being a cat for fuck's sake. <laughs> Honestly, I think the best way for me to review this movie is just, just to go through everything that happens in the plot. Just so you get the idea of how absurd this piece of film really is. Actually, no, the best way for you to understand that is to watch it. Go watch it right now, end to end. Let it move you. And then come back and let's unpack it together. Velocipastor. It starts with the pastor. He's giving a sermon or whatever, you know, he's standing up at the church giving a speech, you know, I don't know, I, <laughs> I haven't been to church that many times, but that, you know, and he goes outside afterwards, and he sees his parents, and he's like, oh, hi, and they're like, ah, and then he looks, we hear an explosion, and he looks back, and it just says VFX car on fire, <laughs> and it goes back to him, and he's like, no, no. Which immediately made me chuckle, heartily. VFX car on fire, that's funny, right? But then it made me confused a little bit, because I'm like, is this, you know, I feel like all good bad movies are so good because they're not self-aware. You know, it, they're like, they're always called something like big goth alligator titties or something like that, but it tries to be like a Scorsese film. So it's funny, right? But this movie, I guess, is trying to be like a little bit more self-aware. So it's like a scary movie type movie where it's like dumb and absurd on purpose, which is also hard to do. So that doesn't give this a pass. And we will find meaning in this movie or I'm not Cody the Cinema Cat. That's what they call me, Cody the Cinema Cat. So then the elder priest here, we'll call him uh, Papa Priest. Papa Priest sits him down and he goes, that's what parents do, they die on you. <laughs> He says that. That's what parents do, they die on you. It's what parents do, they die on you. Which is a pretty legendary thing to say to somebody hours after they lose someone <laughs> close to them. Just, Ew, man, that sucks. I guess so that's what people do though, they fucking die, right? So get over it. So then Papa Priest gives him more wine and he convinces him to travel. Which, you know, is the, I'm sure that's the advice of every Instagram influencer ever. <laughs> Something hard happens. Just fucking take a trip, man. Go to Cabo. So Doug, our protagonist, he goes to China. And there's this funny scene where he's just like in a on a hike in the middle of the forest. And he just stands there and goes, China. China. And then randomly this woman who's being chased or hunted by someone gets hit with an arrow through her chest and collapses right in front of Doug. And he's like, are you okay? Even though it's very clear she has an arrow through her heart. And she goes, she gives him like this tooth thing or like a bone or something. And she's like, destroy it immediately or they will hunt you forever. And then she dies. Later. Peace. Bye. And just as you're thinking, what is this tooth thing? It's like a smooth, big, whatever. It bites him or something? <laughs> I'm not really sure. He's holding it. And then all of a sudden he's like, ah! And there's like a giant gash in his hand from the smooth bone that he was holding. And then he wakes up. So you're like, wait, was that a dream? Turns out it wasn't. It's actually a pretty important part of the plot. They just decided to start the next scene with him violently waking up just to, you know, throw us off a little bit. So he wakes up in bed. He's back home now, right? And he's kind of sick for some reason. He's like, oh, man, I feel so hungry. And so he leaves the church and he's stumbling around the street and something's happening to him, right? He's going through some kind of transformation. It's like when Spider-Man got bitten by the spider and inherits the spider's powers, some of them, 
Doug gets bitten by a bone and, you know, gets a boner or something. No, he, I don't know. He's maybe he's inheriting its prehistoric powers, perhaps a little foreshadowing, maybe. But before we find out what that could be, what happens to him, the story shifts to this prostitute walking down the street and she chats with her pimp. Her pimp's name is Frankie Mermaid because, well. And why is my name Frankie Mermaid? Because you're swimming in bitches. Swimming in bitches. That is awesome. That's, that is good writing. And I hope this dude raps because that's a great rap name, Frankie Mermaid. And he's got a great haircut. And that's actually why they call me Cody the Cinema Cat because I am feline this movie. Fuck that joke. So he's like, he's like, where are you tricking tonight to her? And, and she goes to the park and he goes, good. Cause that's where the real money is. And you are the real money. And then he laughs like maniacally. <laughs> and she gives him this like awful look, even though that I feel like that's kind of weirdly a compliment. I'm not sure. But then she goes the next scene that we cut to the park where she says she's gonna make real money and there's nobody around. It's literally deserted. She's walking through a dark forest. You think the real money would be like on a busy corner in a city, but she's just walking in a rural forest, just secluded, cruising around by herself. And what happens, but she gets, she, this dude tries to mug her, of course. So then this dude comes out of nowhere and tries to mug her, obviously, because she's in a forest alone. And then the dude that's mugging gets attacked by, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Velocipaster. It's the fucking, we've all been waiting for this moment, it's the title of the movie, and here he is, Velocipaster. In all of his prehistoric glory, he, um, I don't know, he attacks the dude, you can't really, it's like done through weird cutscenes and incredible special effects, by the way, truly. Uh, this kind of looks like somebody, somebody's nephew paper mache a raptor head for their science fair or something. Uh, but, I mean, what else can you expect? This movie was made for $35,000. $35,000 a feature film was made about a, a fucking pastor that changes into a velociraptor. So, I mean, I don't, I don't blame them for this. Okay, so then Doug wakes up in the prostitute's bed. And they have this conversation where she's like, last night was amazing. And he was... He thinks that they had sex. <laughs> so they have this really confusing conversation where he's like, wait, I'm a priest. This can't happen again. And she's like, oh, wait, are you talking about sex? Oh, no, I'm talking about the fact that you turned into a dinosaur and killed a man last night. Ate him, in fact. And so then he freaks out even more. And he's like, no, wait, I don't believe you. And they go to the forest where the body is laying. But he doesn't have any clothes from being a dinosaur. And so he wears her little orange dress <laughs> which i feel like they could have stopped at kohl's or something and just picked up a pair of pants at least but i do i have to admit this was pretty funny it is a little bit of a, like a god ah, that's good that's goofy with the little dress so doug can't handle the thought of potentially being half a dinosaur so he goes back to the church to be a priest again and he walks into the confession booth and who the fuck walks in the other side but f who would you guess first of all what are you thinking yeah, that's right. Frankie effing mermaid walks on the other side and he confesses to pretty much every crime in the book. He confesses to not only stealing candy from a baby and then throwing the baby in the river, <laughs> but he confesses to, guess what? Killing Doug's parents. <laughs> Plot twist. Say it with me, folks. <laughs> Plot twist. And so, uh-oh, what... What's that? I hear the distant boom of a of a dinosaur footstep. Right? Velociraptor comes out. Uh, through the confession booth, kills Frankie Mermaid. Yeah! Later, dude. So he kills him, he goes back to the prostitute. They bond over the fact that he killed her awful boss and the guy that killed his parents. And then they agree that he's gonna use his powers to fight crime. So now he's a fucking superhero. And this is a superhero film. And there's this montage of him training and them dressed in 70s clothes and also falling in love a little bit. <clears throat> a lot of storylines going on, right? Well, might as well throw in another one because at this point we cut to a new character. 30 minutes in and they're like, here's a new character. 
it's this Chinese ninja leader guy who we find out um, wants Velocir Pastor dead. I don't really. It doesn't explain why. He just he just wants him dead. I guess this is Velociraptor's enemy, right? Every every superhero needs an adversary, and this is this is it. This is Velocir Pastor's venom, I guess. Also, I was I realized when I was writing this, I had it paused on the movie, and you can see the boom for this entire shot. <laughs> Fantastic. So then Doug goes back to the church and Papa Priest is like, what's wrong with you? You're different. You switched up on me. And Doug tells him about the dinosaur, the velociraptor, the whole thing. And Papa's like, you need an exorcism. I know exactly what you need. A nice cold exorcism. And he's like, I know a guy. And he calls in Chris Angel to rid the demons from him. And, uh, and as this is happening, we get a little backstory on both characters, on Doug and Papa Priest. A trip down memory lane, if you will. We find out that, um, you know, Doug was very close with his parents. He liked to laugh with them. <laughs> and we find out that Papa Priest was in a war of some sort. He fought for his country. And his friend, this all happens via flashback, okay? Flashback are, flashbacks are kind of a common uh, device in this film. So then we see his friend die randomly right in front of him. And then we see his wife, who he loves very deeply, show up on the battlefield right after his friend dies and run towards him. And she steps on a mine and she explodes and he just gets this fucking awful pool of blood all over him. James! Poor guy, man. So that's his fun little backstory. Anyways, the whole exorcism thing is still going on, right? And guess what happens? The fucking Velocipaster comes out, of course. You're gonna try and get rid of the fucking half dinosaur side of him? Of course it's gonna be a little pissed about that. So it comes out and it attacks Papa Priest. <laughs> we learn this horrible backstory about him. We feel, we feel bad for him, we empathize, and then he just gets dunked on by the Toronto Raptors. So then Doug leaves, or the, you know, the Raptor leaves, whatever. And on the way home, he gets attacked by ninjas because they're still trying to make this part of the story. I don't know where the fuck this, the ninjas come in all of a sudden. It's just confusing the fuck out of me, but he gets attacked. And he gets home, and him and the prostitute make sweet love. <laughs> and then the ninjas come back. They followed him home and just decided to wait till the lovemaking session was over. And they attack them. And Doug and the, and the prostitute, they win. But they're like, they're not going to stop. We have to go to the head ninja and fight him. So I feel like at this point, we're building up to the crescendo of Act 2. Which all takes place at the ninja leader's place. We cut there, and Papa Priest is there for some reason, and he wakes up. I don't know how he got there, but he wakes up there, and he's like, Where am I? Where's where's Doug? And the ninja leader tells him his plans of why he's even in the movie. <laughs> Basically, his plan is to sell enough cocaine to the, to the people that they get hooked on it, and then take away the cocaine supply so that they turn to religion, and the ninja can kind of start a cult through the priest. Right, makes sense. This all kind of feels like a very bizarre shroom trip, to be honest, but I am still enjoying it. I love the fact that, you know, near the end of the movie, we finally find out what the motivation of the enemy is. This is his plan. At the end of the movie, we find that out. <laughs> Anyways, Papa Priest doesn't want to do it. He's like, no, I don't want to convert the unwilling. I'm not I'm not open to that. It's, it's against my, you know, code of ethics and and I'm not gonna and then he fucking dies the ninja leader just kills him so that's this guy's character arc that's that's all it is is he loses his friend and his girlfriend while he's fighting for his country he consoles Doug when Doug loses his parents he tries to help Doug when Doug is changing into a raptor and then he gets killed because he doesn't want to start a ninja cult speaking of character arcs we also have another little fun twist here we find out that one of the main white dudes that works for the ninja leader is doug's brother and we go back to the flashbacks that we saw before but they last a little bit longer we get we get to see the end of them and this guy is in them like for example in the, in the car one he just is in the trunk of the car <laughs> and then for the one in the kitchen he's standing in the kitchen 
just being a reject, basically. By he's a, re he's a he's a reject of his own family. So then Doug and his brother have this insane fight, and he kills his brother. And I guess we're supposed to feel good about that. Again, it's like the person with the messed up backstory usually is the one that comes out on top, right? You're always cheering for the underdog. But in this case, we just get we just get to keep we just get to watch them keep losing. So then the prostitute dies, and now he goes into full raptor mode. I don't know why he didn't before, but now he's really mad and he goes into raptor mode. And then one of the probably one of the best fight scenes in movie history happens. You know that scene in Lord of the Rings, that war scene? that costs probably millions and millions of dollars of all the orcs and everything. This is fucking better than that. Easily. Easily. And this costs probably $10, this fight scene. And then he delivers the best finishing line of all time. I think my hand is immune. And he pulls off the fucker's head, just, just, ah! and it's just like hilarious screaming with, a, you know, a random Gandhi quote over top, and it's time for act three. Turns out Carol is actually alive. Carol, that's her name. She's actually alive. And the doctor that tells him that rips a cigarette in his own waiting room, and, and we're reassured that she's fine. She survived. They both did. The bad guys all died. And uh, the movie ends by them deciding to go around the world and kill other ninja leaders, because what what better way to end this movie than, than to set it up for a sequel? I don't, I don't fucking know. I give this movie a six, because it was really entertaining and funny, because it's just so goddamn random and meaningless and good and bad at the same time. I feel like there just needs to be more of this, you know? Give 30K to someone with zero movie making or writing experience at all, and just see what they come up with. Just fucking just give give someone 35 grand and some mushrooms and be like, go have a movie in two days. OK, so what's the meaning? Cody, the cinema cat. What is it? The meaning is, the meaning of this movie is the lesson is don't be a loser, I guess. Don't don't be the reject of your family. Don't be the less cool brother. <laughs> and Christianity is bad or good. One of those two. And dinosaurs rule. And yeah, that's the lesson. Dinosaurs rule. Dinosaur rules. Number one, dinosaurs rule. Thank you for watching. Go watch the movie. Hope you enjoyed this. Goodbye.